Anyway, uh, Marty came to me and he said, Game over, man! Game over, man! Um, the microscopic aliens have got into my amplifier and they're going to kill it. And this is the noise it's making in memory of Bill Paxton, who coincidentally was born the same day that Hoofbag was hatched. Anyway, welcome to Hoofbag Amplifier Repair. again uh, thank you for coming to view our video on hoof bags amplifier repair as I said uh, Marty who's a mate of ours came to us with his amplifier it does make an awful noise doesn't it but if you turn the volume down it goes away peace at last anyway the reason um, you're still you, talking though. if you think about I'm sorry? Sorry, you're still talking there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> this bit going up and down. Anyway, um, with, with an amplifier like this, they're all pretty much built the same way. Anyway, uh, I've done a little bit of reverse engineering on the um, amplifier schematic, on the amplifier itself by looking at the components. Also, I've looked at uh, a website and same thing. Um, anyway, so as, as I was explained earlier, when you turn the volume down, um, the, the noise stops. The reason why that is, is because if the first stage is, let's say I could do a valve like that, and that will be half of an ECC83. That will be um, the cathode. Uh, it goes to a resistor down to ground, um, like that. And there's a capacitor across there, <coughs> which is <coughs> referred to as bypass capacitor. I think yeah um, now the um, got the input there this is half of an ECC 83 the other half goes over there this is typical arrangement for this kind of amplifier and then you've got um, bias resistor there to hold the grid to ground and then you've got a capacitor and that's the input now with the um, It can only be one, the, the noise that's being created as the fault has got to be in this area, which is the first stage, because you've got the um, capacitor there, which goes into the potentiometer, the top of the potentiometer. And then you've got this here, there's another capacitor, usually, uh, like that, capacitor, and then got resistor to ground to hold the grid in uh, ground potential. Now uh, I've disconnected this capacitor, didn't make any difference, soldered it back. So the obvious capacitors are a constant problem in electronic devices and in this particular instance it happens to be a point zero point zero one F ceramic and it's gone short circuit well not totally short circuit but it's got leakage problems now in this particular instance we've got 271 volts sitting there plus 271 volts it's going through the resistor which is about 100k and the actual current this would normally stop any DC coming through going to this potentiometer and because this is leaky we're getting DC leaking past the capacitor which should normally only allow AC to pass the AC signal of the amplified guitar <clears throat> and it's not not fully uh, short circuit it's kind of yeah maybe I am maybe I'm not short circuit it's leaky um, anyway, so that's applying DC to this potential, this potentiometer, which is the volume. The tone control is always also there somewhere. You'll find that um, looking at the schematic, you'll have a potentiometer, and you know um, usually a capacitor there. So 
this I suspect that this item here is the one that's faulty so what we're going to do is we're going to change this uh, ceramic capacitor for perhaps um, um, a, a polyester or something like that because capacitors are so much cheaper than they used to be I mean uh, it seems strange that a company like Fender would put a ceramic capacitor in there sitting at nearly 271 volts but that's obviously they've learnt from the experience maybe they don't do it anymore um, but anyway we're going to change that capacitor see if it helps oh I've got to find me solder right anyway um, getting back to this schematic this capacitor here 0 0.01 microfarad ceramic is this little one here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to Ooh, cut, cut the thing out chop it off naughty, it? very naughty because this is the offending component okay so we pop across oh, yeah. there and and cut that one there like this this is uh, the um, coupling capacitor off, interstage coupling capacitor the power is off what? <laughs> yeah just be just be absolutely sure uh, about yeah. that. Like now just, anyway, the capacitor we're putting in is the same value, 0 0.01, 0 uh, 0.01, I should say, and also known as um, 10N, which is the same as 10,000 PF. One way of remembering your NFs, microfarads, PFs, is always to remember that 1N is 1,000 PF. It's catchy. Works, yes. And that is the same as point zero, uh, well, 1 to the minus 9, I think. Yeah. PF is 12, then 9, and micro is 6. Microfarads is 6. So we're going to... Just tinned the edges of those. I always like to fold, it, roll it into a ball, squash it so there's a large surface area. Always the best way to do these things. Then we put a blob of solder on there like that. Like this. There we go. Nice big blob. Nice big blob of solder. And then we pop this one on here. That's it. Just like that. Lovely. Always blow it because, first of all, the fumes aren't very nice to breathe. So you turn your face away, suck the air in, turn back to the work, blow it. <laughs> Don't suck in solder fumes ever. Nasty yeah. stuff. It's the flux yeah. mostly that is a problem. And the uh, unleaded solder is even worse in the point of view of flux because most lead. Most leaded solder, which is the only stuff worth using anyway, um, is it's based on um, pine tree, um, pine tree sap. What I just pulled out there was a the wire from the old capacitor, and I've done that because there is a risk that the wire might fall through. And, and get to the chassis and cause a short circuit which we don't want then we go like this we solder this end now a bit more solder now. there we go it's a shame I don't know any nearby good guitarists that can do the testing for me so you have to do unfortunately you might have to listen to me doing the guitar <laughs> oh no same not hoofbag on the guitar again same old riff same old rubbish always turn your face away that's it blow okay so that i think is an effective repair so what we're going to do mm. i'm going to unplug the solving iron and plug the amplifier mm. back in <clears throat> now the other thing i need to mention of course is Valve amplifiers, in particular, always have very high voltages and it, unless you really know what you're doing, it's not a good idea to um, interfere with them. So, this is the big question. Has it worked? Well, that's ordinary noise that you would get, but it's certainly not as bad as it would be.
with that faulty component so as it is actually a bass amp I shall not be playing my guitar instead I'll be playing a bass there's the bass bit of a trashy old thing but the bass, bass, the biscuit bass biscuit bass plug him in Okay, um, to our bar booty. others <clears throat> well <coughs> I don't know why companies do this but um, these two components here let's find an item that I can prod with <laughs> these two components here are called um, semiconductor solid state rectifier diodes uh, there are three valves in it, or well, four if you include the fact that the ECC83 or 12AX7 is a double triode. Um, now, so the problem with using a solid state rectifier in a valve amp is that when you switch the amplifier on, the, the HT is instant, which means HT comes up before that the um, valves have had a chance to warm up. Now, unfortunate circumstance or consequence of that, I should say, is something known as cathode stripping, which means, well, it's not very kind to the valves to apply a plate voltage of, say, 300 volts and then allow the heaters to, move, to warm up gradually. My personal preference for an amplifier of valve type is to use a valve rectifier, in which case... Uh, the the valve the valve rectifier takes time to warm up and it will not give any HT out until all the other valves have warmed up so there's a kind of a delay to get round that the very very big amps like you know Marshalls and stuff they do have solid state rectifiers however they have what is known as a standby switch and any good guitarist or bass player or any other person else using those knows that you have to <coughs> Switch the amplifier on the mains with the uh, with the standby switch off, and after a minute, then you switch the standby, which in fact applies the HT to the rest of the circuit. That is the way that Marshall have got around the problem of avoiding the issue of cathode stripping. Mm. And it's unfortunate that this particular amp doesn't have that. Doesn't have a solid state rectifier. Doesn't have a valve rectifier. Has a solid state rectifier, which is not really good. On the other hand, the gain for only three stages of amplification. You've got two stages in the ECC83, also known as a 12AX7. Two stages of amplification there. And these two valves here work as one, in fact. They're um, class B, um, push-pull. So in actual fact, there's only three stages of amplification. However, it does have a great deal of gain considering that. The reason why is because they use a driver transformer, which effectively couples the anode voltage from the last from the pen from the triode and couples that to the um, output valves in class B. In addition to that the transformer also provides phase splitting so that each valve works in the opposite phase to the other one and that's push pull. So 
that's that's it there's good things about this amp and bad ones but um i certainly would have one if someone gave me <laughs> they're lovely very nice amp anyway having said that yeah. we should switch off giving out a lot more than the amplifier was originally designed for so that's not even <coughs> what quarter so that's so yeah it's near that's actually the top that is loud that is naughty loud psychiatrist who doesn't believe in ME cross the Mobius strip because he wanted to get to the same side. <laughs> Bye YouTube folks. <laughs>